Okay. All right, everyone, welcome to Six Scale. Um, if you can yourself as an attendee, please, to the meeting. I'll link the docs in the, uh, the chat, meeting chat. Um, okay, so today we're, uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, kind of continue on with some discussions that we had last week um, and kind of try and see if we can take some of the uh, things that we have um, that we've a little bit talked about in the past and kind of um, talk a little bit more about the implementation, how we can accomplish some of these things. Um, and like I mentioned last week, um, uh, we so we're going to move to weekly. Uh, I also said on the mailing list, and, and I'm sure you're all aware because you're here that we're going to be doing, we'll do weekly meetings on, on Thursday. Okay. Um, so the first item uh, on the list, this is, um, the PR that um, Marcelo uh, has been working on. Um, Marcelo, do you want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, had any of the progress that you've been able to make on, on this one since last Thursday? Oh, hi. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have too much things to update. Um, I was busy with some activities and I'm updating the PR. Today, I just realized, so <laughs> it was a little bit mess to update that because it was no waiting. And I just realized today that uh, Kubevir changed the, the master branch to main. And so, and things was not like, was not synchronized well. And anyway, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, update that. So the idea is, to remove all the the parts that I'm collecting from Mito's metrics and have only the part that actually is creating a bunch of VM and and measuring the and getting the uh, creation uh, you know running time from the VM and from the creation to running phase and and report that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, okay. All right. So it sounds like we don't need to talk anything more about um, this then. I think, uh, I think that's understood. Okay. Um, so the, let's go to the second bullet point then. Um, this is, um, this is the issue that I created to measure um, the different performance metrics. Um, so we've already had some progress here. David did a nice job on this and We've already had um, we already have that merged. Uh, I wanted to talk about some of the remaining bullet points and just see if we could kind of talk about how we can implement some of these, um, or if you even want to change some of these or add or remove any of these. Um, so I copied the bullet points in here. Um, the first one, um, you know, work queue length. Um, I started looking at this. I already started to write some code about about it. Um, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, essentially. We want uh, the what what at least the way I'm doing it is it's having a, a gauge, um, a gauge vector where with we take the key's name and record it, um, and then increment the gauge every time that we see a key that gets pulled off um, the queue. Um, so we have some sort of count, and then we decrement it every time that the um, it is it completes. Uh, so this the idea is that this will give us. At any given time, uh, the number of, or the, the how long our, our work queue is, and we can we can monitor that in Prometheus. Um, do, what do people think about that? Is that um, I don't know, is that the right approach? What do people think? Sounds good. I mean, okay. they pretty clearly see how much is included. Oh, um, yeah. Um, not entirely sure. Yeah, I mean, if it's if things really go south you, south, you will see it in Prometheus at least. Yeah, I think like, so what we've seen like from our measurements, cause we basically just kind of did some experiments a while ago where we kind of posted this to standard out to record and we just kind of script the logs for it. Um, with, in general, what I expect us to see is like to have like a count that's high and it just kind of stays high and then it slowly goes down and it very quickly descends. Um, so I'm curious to see how it shows up and see if we see the same behavior um, because I guess what we would expect is that we have like a, a parabola where it just where it quickly increases and then it quickly 
decreases or even just almost no Q at all because it's just being the input is speed is equals the output speed. So let's, we'll see, but uh, that, that'll give us some good information. Okay. Uh, would you want to partner yeah. that with a, a kind of a queue service time to see how long each event, you know, on average, how long each event's taken to get through the queue? Yeah, so this is what I was thinking for number two. Um, so like event callbacks in queue time, um, or maybe we'll, we can clarify this. So like, so Gavin, like we'll talk to me about what you're thinking. Um, I was thinking service time of the queue uh, from when the event's delivered uh, in the work queue to uh, when we're done. Okay. So, so like an event start time. time. Yeah, start. okay, so an event. Uh, okay, and this could be, so an event, to clarify what that, what that would mean, that, that's like, um, that would be like a, that would be what, like a key has been added to the queue is that what it'd be? Oh, yeah, yeah then, be, uh, just the queue, the, the queue um, service function called, I guess, uh, for any event. Okay, so we add, we add. Okay, so any any, so any any call whatsoever that is it. Wait, so this would be like um like like when we do a requeue, kind of like that, like when we did. Um, I'm trying to find the diagram. So, so if we did like um, when we do, let's say like right here. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So when let's say we see a um, a status change, right? Right. We update the status, then we add ourselves back to the queue, and then we go through this loop again after we get picked up. So I guess so I like, was thinking the, the first day just talking about the depth of the queue and this uh, and then the second uh, average time average trip time through the queue for each and effectively the two multiplied together tells you how much time you're spending in, in that processing uh, handler. Uh, what well, else? Uh, I guess I wasn't thinking of the EQ. Okay, well, I just want to make sure I capture this. So like, this is, so if I, how would I, um, when would I start this? Like, when would I start my sort of, when would I start my timer? I think at the entry there? point to the work queue, uh, whatever it's called, execute or. Um, okay. Okay, at the start of execute, and then when we we stop at the uh, when the keys pulled off, turn. so or when it returns. Okay, so this is the so the, so not the entire time of execute, but for each individual key, we're getting so it's very similar to this. So just get the time of kind of each individual yep. key. Yes, and then and then maintain an average uh, okay. across all keys. So time time each individual key's execution. Okay. Um, and keep an average, uh, or you know, uh, outliers or whatever it is, uh, for the. Okay. Okay, let's do that. Event processing time. Okay. So event callback. So this this is going to be whenever. Maybe I should change the title here because so I I'm calling this callbacks in queue time. So this could be like for example. Um, so this okay. What what this doesn't capture is the the time spent in, in the, the queue, queue right before and, you get serviced. Yeah. So what I wonder yeah. here is if if we are really interested in that too much. I mean to a degree yes. But I personally would be more interested in seeing how long we need for a key to be processed. Okay. So how, so you wanted, so that would be like how fast an individual key is being processed. Maybe yeah, so, so, I mean, that the faster the processing loops in the controller are, the faster we can pick the next key from, from the queue, right? Okay. Yeah, so that so would like, be Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that would be the service time, and then like, like you were referring to the queuing time before you're picked to run, is also interesting because that that 
we saw that with the uh, rate limiters where th things were sitting in the queue for a long time because of the rate limiter. So we uh, we'd want to measure that to, to pick it up. I'm not sure what you mean, you mean uh, the error rate limiting or something? The uh, no, the um, Kubernetes client, um, the, the, the default client has a rate limiter and uh, um, you, and you effectively spend lots of time in the queue before you come out of it again. Um, so to make that visible, I think you need to, to measure the queue time, the, the time in the queue. Yeah, my only thing is that I, it's from that perspective not clear if you spend, for instance, time in such a rate limiting thing or if you if it's enqueued there for a long time because your processing loop takes a long time. Right. Um, okay, so how how should we kind of tackle this? Because like I, I could see this kind of going from so I could do like for instance, um, we could I could literally do the moment when a key gets added to a, to the queue. So that would I think be like like when we do when we do this like requeue call or enqueue call whatever it is like with enqueue maybe um, we do we record the time the timestamp. Um, yeah. Just, just be careful with the enqueue things because you can delay the enqueuing too, right? It's... What do you mean you can delay the enqueuing? You can say so requeue after a time. Yeah. So there are two ways on how to get it into the queue again, right? One is to update the, one thing is that the object changes and you get it through the watcher, or the yeah. other way is to enqueue it with a delay again. Uh, we shouldn't really have direct re-enqueues. So how, when should I and, start measuring? And even this? with like, the uh, uh, NQ like, after thing, yeah. uh, if the object changes in the meantime, it would still be processed. So it's not a fixed delay. It's like a, at worst case, look at it after this time again. Okay. Well, all right. So how should I how should I measure this? And like when would we start? Want, when would we want to measure this? We want to know the amount of time that a key is spent um, in the queue. What would be my start point? Would it be at the start of execute or would it be, I mean, it wouldn't be because that's just, that. that's like, that's started for every, that's just a loop. It would need to be somewhere before that or even not before that. It's whenever, there's somewhere after that. So in principle, there is always code which first waits until, until we get confirmation from Kubernetes, from, from the underlying Kubernetes libraries that the cache is in sync so that it, Listed everything first and is up to date. Yeah. Um, and then we normally start. So, but this means that the controller then starts with a fuel queue because all objects which are interesting for us will be processed. Right? It's it's hmm. it may be a little bit tricky to get a clear clean starting point because of that. Okay. Um, I, I didn't look too much into the rate limiter, to be honest. I can, but I, I found it pretty straightforward to to do the actual pro to measure the actual processing time, and not how long it stays in the queue. Well, but, that, that's so. Like that's we want well, that. That's kind of what we want, though. But like that's what. So we, we want to know an individual event, like if if the status. If we just updated the status of a VMI, like yeah. how long do we know the moment we st we up we like did the update to when it gets processed, right? That's yeah. like our event so, processing. Time. Um, I had for me it was I mean you showed us some graphs and so on, but for me it was always a little bit unclear how you were getting these this data and what exactly you were measuring and where exactly what time was spent, so. Okay. Uh, I think with the PR from David, we have now a much better way of looking under the VM startup times and phase transitions. And I think the next step, the direct next step, I mean, a lot of what of here, what zero on the list makes sense, but at least for me from a first uh, structure gathering, analysis, I would really look into in addition how long controllers need for the uh, objects to process them in the controller loop. And, um, and yeah, um, yeah, 
that's pretty, pretty much it. And then, then you can narrow it down already a lot in the, basically in the business logic and less in the infrastructure logic where issues are. And when you still can't find anything there, I guess the rate limiting and the queue length may become more interesting. But I mean, you saw an increase in the queue count, for instance, but it was never clear for yeah. me if we actually spend time in the processing loop or if they are really stuck in the queue for such a long time for non-obvious reasons. Yeah, well, that that's like that's kind of what I want to find out. Like with this, it's like because it's just it's the like we have a general idea. Like we can see when we do when we are looking at the queue and we're actually processing the events and sort of scraping the events from the log that we can see what their time stamps are. That there's still that something is going on here. Um, yeah, like that kind of the idea. Like yeah, all I mean is like let's say you have uh, five uh, threads for your controller. Yeah, and then and you implement this scotch and you measure the time in the queue, and then there are just let's say I don't know five VMs which for whatever reason are stuck in the processing loop. Then all yeah. events will just stay there for ages before anything moves, and you you will not really see anything with the metrics. Whereas with the other other thing, you would pretty clearly see that suddenly a few objects take an insanely long uh, insanely long time until they finally leave the processing part right so yeah I, like, I just yeah. mean like just from the queue length it wouldn't be the first thing i would implement i would first look at the other thing but i don't know okay well so, i mean I, I, but i, I mean you also like hinted that. somehow that that you saw already that it's clearly due to the rate limiting or something which is just new to me but i mean can of course be yeah like like Gavin said like there's some rate limiting that is happening which is something that um like that's fine like we can we can get around the rate limiter um but more than that like would like to understand like why it's getting rate limited in the first place trying to understand why like why it has to do that so that that's kind of that's what I like I want to capture with these because something is going on with the queue that doesn't, doesn't quite make sense. It's not yeah, like that anything. Some, like, that is something. I mean, how do how how do you know that is that it is the rate limit limited, not the processing loops, for instance? Oh, how because you, I never heard that. Why? Oh, because when when we when we've gone through and inc increase the QPS to get rid of, to get around the late rate limiter, it goes away. We increase what? We 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 go right increase the the QPS in the the rate limiter and the what is it the 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 client or something, Gavin, and, and then the problem goes away. Yeah, when you create your um, I forget the call it uh, create uh, something from config when you create your Kubernetes client, uh, if you just accept the default, you get uh, something like 10, 10 ops per second with a burst of ten or something like that. Um, but you can specify a, a higher a burst and a higher um, average rate. And when we increase that, uh, we got substantially okay, higher. So then, OK, then in general, OVMs start fast suddenly. Or... Yeah, OK. Well, uh, OK. Uh, well, if that is it, OK, then yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll get some well, anyway, I, I think we'll get some some things from this. Even if it becomes we we kind of prove that it's that it's a non-factor, then that's that's fine. Like we can we can get rid of it. That's okay. I, I think like I think that there it would be good to know kind of just to get some insight into what's going on in some of this uh, in this area. So okay, so just I, I one think comment. the the work yeah. queue has some you know some metrics that can be exposed, like uh, the queue length and okay. the the. The time, you know, the, the key timing, you know, like uh, I just sent like here uh, some links in the chats here in the Zoom. So um, I'm just wondering if we need to, you know, um, you know, the, the depth. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is some metrics. The, the other link actually shows it's a little bit better, you know. Um, it's running process. The other one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you just uh, you know the death key and the queue you know latency 
you know, uh, work okay. duration. Um, and did, I think this, those those kind of metrics, it's very related. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. so yeah. I, I, maybe we don't need to, you know, re-implement the thing again and just expose them and That's good, yeah. and then the processing uh, time of the, the the key itself as Ramon was mentioning this one is actually the one that's not is missing here it doesn't have it so then it might be be very interesting to spend more time maybe in this one and expose okay. those ones here okay this yes, looks good I would um, also start with this exposing that should be just enabling it basically in the code yeah and then, yeah. yeah so we need to expose so the, what what do we like what um I, I haven't looked at this so like this we just need to um we just need to report them they're already there or something like or or like we just need to wire them up or something to like whatever keyword exports yeah you have to wrap the queue or something in a specific way okay uh, I, okay it's more we're just wiring the client libraries properly which you already have okay this looks good. So we we've got some. Okay, so we could hook all of these up, and I think that's that would satisfy like kind of what we're looking mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think both these. I think they cover actually all of, of these work queue ones. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Okay. That that looks great. So then. Um, okay. So that we can we can look at wiring it up. So I it, um, I can take that one. I'm already sort of looking at this one. So. Um, I can look at wiring these up. That mm -hmm. looks, that looks good. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay. Um, all right. We'll skip past these work queue ones um, since I think that's covered. Um, let's talk about some others. Um, latency between the vert launcher pod and the VMI object. Oh, this is vert launcher pod being ready in the VMI object. Um, what's a way we could report this as a as a metric? Um, could um why do we, do we i think we already set the metrics provider it should already be exposed this one how how yeah. so like what what's um the, the vm phase i mean should show there, something like that yeah. do we have a time step for for one of for, do we have time step for both these available and then we just need to wire them up to be you know, oh. The All I meant is that regarding to what, what, what Marce Marcello shared, the metrics provider, I, I mean, I added that already uh, two years ago or something, and it should actually be reported. Did you ever check if it's there? Um, no, I, I don't know. What, what is the metric called? Um, um, there is depth, adds, queue latency, and so on. Wait, sorry, you're talking about this? You're talking about the work you said? Yeah, I'm still on the work queue. So, so what oh. Marcello just said. So, okay. uh, this 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 monitor, I already wait, wait, let me check. But show history. Yeah, edit this in 2018 already. It should be there actually. I wonder maybe oh, okay. if there's something wrong with. But I've at least when I edited, I've seen I've seen it. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, less work to do. All right, good. Um, all right, we just need to find it then. It's just in Prometheus. So you just need to wire it up to the dashboard. Okay, great. Okay, so the next one, um, so latency between the vert launcher pod being ready and the and the VMI object. Um, so what about this one? Like, how can we? So we had. I think to do this, we need to know. We have to have a timestamp of when the vert launcher pod becomes ready and then we need um, to know when the VMI object goes to running. So we might have this. So we have the VMI object running now with data changes. So we just need a diff between the two. Do this, I think we are doing, we, we must have this, like the, this is- Is that well, not least, scheduled uh, phase, that launcher pod being ready? Is that not when we- uh, update the VMI to schedule. Yeah, yeah, it's so. Yeah, so as soon oh, as is it scheduled that it goes to ready. Oh, yeah. sorry, 
You're but, right. So when we, it's scheduling. So, uh, yeah, go on. Yeah. So it's so we go so we go from scheduling. Yeah. Okay. So it's so it needs to match VMI, um, scheduling and vert launcher ready. Yeah, you're right, Kevin. We need those. So we need. So we have this now with David's change. Yeah. And this one. I don't know. Do we? I don't know if we have this. Can we? Does this report it on the object? Yeah. So when when Lurt, Lurt launcher gets ready, the VM goes to scheduled. I mean, so it's not exactly when Lurt launcher is ready, but almost immediately. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I want to measure because there is a different. There, well, there there is a gap here. There there, and it, it's and like I was talking about earlier, like we. There, we it's it's noticeable like when um, that there is actually time and for for a number of the reasons we mentioned before there's time between these two. So like and this we time have still exists when you increase the rate limiting. It it almost all goes away when we increase the rate limiting. But I, I I'm not sure if this is the one you mean, right? But I, I've seen even today I saw. Um, a VMI where the pod was ready and running and it took about a minute before the, uh, and the VMI was in scheduled status and it took about a minute before the VMI got updated to running state uh, or running phase. And I don't know where that time went. Uh, you know, Vert Handler does that update, but, um, and it waits for the domain to get going and so on. But um, I don't know how it can take a minute for that. Well, we want we want to know like we want to know like once this pod is ready, we, there's a handoff that happens, right? So schedule it. So is it is it is it scheduling or scheduled? Because I like where uh, the handoff it goes from scheduled. Yeah. So once the launch is ready, it goes to scheduled, and in addition, uh, a label is added to the to the VMI, which makes it visible to Vert Handler. From that point on, Vert Handler can see it in its own queue. And we'll do the delivered part of work and some additional hardware setup. Okay, oh, cool. and there's our there's our diff. We have we need this timestamp. We have this one on David's changes. We need this one, um, but we could get this even if we don't have it already. Um, this would be easy to get um, because it's it's seeing it like when, when the moment we do that action when the uh, controller does the handoff, we could take so, a timestamp. I mean, you just mentioned yourself that when you increase the rate limiting, the, all the issues pretty much disappear. So I guess I would not focus on too many small details here. You seem to have, it seems to make sense to finally have, an in, in, have insight into the queue, also seeing if the processing rates are fast and seeing if things are fine then and trying to capture this threat. Then yeah, I, I guess so. The point is like that we, with if if QPS sort of is the solution, like um, it, it, it's just kind of curious because um, what how I don't know how that's going to scale. Like that's the that's the concern. Is so I'm wondering if we can find some insight into why it is that we're getting rate limited. Yeah, I'm just not sure if you can find it with this. No, you're not, you're not going to find it with this. This is the, the idea is, is that if something, so this, the goal of this one is that if say, for example, we had a change that was introduced that somehow caused an issue between these two things so that we had some sort of delay, we could, we would know it. Like we know that this change actually slowed the processing of the, ver, the, ver, um, the VMI relative to the vert launcher. Like it's just another measurable that we could, we can yeah. look at. That's, that's what the goal is. Because we, we don't we want this to be we want this to be at the pretty much at the exact same time, and, and we can measure that. So we something that is worth doing. Yeah. Okay. So then I think on this one we just need the vert the vert launcher ready time, and then we can take the diff, and then we have um, we take a diff from the scheduled phase, and then we know, and we report it. Okay. Okay. That's I think that that one makes sense. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, how about this one? Uh, latency between volume creation and the vert launcher pod. What is volume creation in this case? What's the, what does it mean? Um, so like, 
Um, this would be the PVC and um, uh, actually, does this make sense? So like with the PVC and then uh, and the difference between the, or the time it takes to create the PVC from your from your dynamic permissioner and your and when the vert launcher pod okay. is actually going. But it's not related to CDI. Yeah, it's yeah. Also okay. external. Yeah. Okay. This is external. Yeah. Okay. We'll skip this one. Okay. Um, device plug in latency. This also is sounding external. Can we, or at least unless there's a way we can measure, um, is there a way we can measure like uh, how long it would take for something to attach? Mm, that would be more in the cubelet area, or, or, or it's difficult. Uh, I mean the hot. Plug. It also dep it depends. Also depends on which device plugins you're talking about. Yeah. There in Kubert we have multiple different kinds of device plugins. Let me, let me put it this way: there is the one set like KVM device plugin and other PCI device plugins, which are directly exposed bigger handler, and then we have other device plugins which are just coming in from other parties. Um, right. can request both, but we always have the issue that <clears throat> the device plugin never knows for which part actually the device was created. So this basically means that the, the kubelet will at some point ask for a device, you will provide the device, but you never know for which part or VM or whatever it was supposed to be used for. And that makes it a little bit difficult to measure anything there. Okay. All right. Maybe that's something that could be implemented on the external plugin side then for both these. Okay. Um, Kubernetes API calls latency count um, made by us. Do what, oh, what's a way we could do this? Uh, uh, David started there, looking There is a the metric. A metric the real Redex pulls some Kubernetes, the Kubernetes calls in latency. Um, of course, we cannot make sure that it's only Kubernetes is calling that, but I would say that in the, in the cluster that we have run the test, it will be mostly made by Kubernetes since we are not going to collocate things in the same cluster. Yeah, that would definitely work for the tests. In addition, David looked into uh, wrapping the Kubernetes client with an instrumenter. Okay. Uh, so, that, so you can, you know, there's, uh, uh, how is it called? Uh, HTTP, I forgot it, uh -huh. how is it called in Go? The round HTTP. trip time, yeah. Round tripper, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah. he, he uh, started think... playing with the round tripper on the client side. Yeah. Maybe uh, there is a something in Kubernetes already. For that. There, there is a Kubernetes, like... I, can't, I can't remember if client goes got that wrapper, but I thought it yeah. did. Yeah, I think he had also mentioned, um, uh, was it Jaeger uh, was the project that did some analysis here? Does anyone remember? I mentioned Jaeger once, yeah, it's general tracing in our code base. Yeah. So we could, so that this, we could use this round tripper and then Jaeger was, I think, was it, does Jaeger just like do, do visualization or is it like have some APIs that we can just like, Call for measurements. Jaeger itself does visualization, but they have their own protocol or use open telemetry for actual tracing inside the um, the code. Like you said, like you said spans, like this is reconciliation and you see how long reconciliation takes and they can do another span inside that's saying this is building a template for whatever. And um, it's less okay. on the API call specifically, but you, instru you can instrument specific pieces of your code. Um, but it also can trans uh, um, jump contexts, like it can pass on through HTTP to other clients. It also implemented. Okay. All right, that sounds like definitely an option too. Okay, so all right, this sounds like we've got two things we can do here. Okay. Just, just some good. some mention. So there was like a well, I would say like last year, some big discussion in Kubernetes about you know enabling Jaeger or not. Because yeah. you know, kind of it's uh Jaeger is for RPC 
it's not really for you know uh, you know asynchronous calls and things can get nasty you know when you in kubernetes for example when you have like a uh, things that doesn't follow the same path for example creating pcs externally and then you don't have you know you know the root the, the root of the the spawn going you know to the creation and i'm just saying that it's maybe it's valuable but may, it can also face some big challenges with Jaeger. um yeah the discussion in, in kubernetes was uh, there's a cap for adding tracing to the api server and the general kubernetes control plane and uh, what's happening now i think is it's solely tracing any synchronous api calls it will not add tracing to like operator reconciliation loops um, but that is for the kubernetes part because uh, the challenge was they wanted to trace everything that happens to a resource and to do that they would have to save the trace context somehow on the resource because asynchronous stuff happens for our case though um, adding tracing to our reconciliation loops and our api calls would be no problem i would say because we just output spans for every reconciliation loop we don't we can't link it to api calls but we still can trace what's happening inside a an operator um and annotate it with the respective information like metadata and stuff uh, just to see what's going on in the operator it's not linked to any synchronous stuff and that shouldn't be a problem I wonder if there's some priority here, because like, um, like, like you're saying just about the queue stuff. I wonder if there's anything about operators already implemented with like Jaeger or something that we can look at. Um, in my previous job, we where I added tracing to all our operators, which were like I don't know, twenty operators for custom stuff. There, nothing open source, and it was trivial to add. Okay. We just added the, the two lines of code for open tracing to where we were curious about more information. And the exporting was done by, in our case, uh, uh, Google Cloud, but you can do that with Jaeger or anything else. Okay. And do you, uh, yeah. you want to look at this one then? Because you seem like you already know what to do here. I can look at the tracing part if I have time. I don't know when that will be. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't mind seeing if we can add some tracing to the operator. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But, uh, I think Roma mentioned Dave is already looking at the round trip before at least tracking API calls. So that's and, something kind of different, I, I would say. Yeah. And we have a basic round trip already. It does not expose yeah. the resource type, but I just added the comments here. You see him in the screen. Yeah. Was that the one that also outputs our client metrics? This is so uh, I added two links here is on the HTTP round trip, you get this. This is wrapping the is client is wrapping client go, and huh? it. But if you go down, you see immediately just just a little oh, yeah, more, it just yeah. does code method and host. You don't get the resource out of it. But if you look at observe and increment, it would be pos it should be possible to extract the resource out of it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I saw those metrics. I wondered where they come from. Yeah, this is the one thing. So that should be easy to extend to also that you can also see, okay, we call, we update the node a lot or we update the guidance a lot. You basically just look at the right, uh, uh, you, you just split this, the, the URL and yeah, you just take it out. right. And yeah. when you go back, uh, Ryan, up to the, to the topic from before, uh, no, I mean, man on the Google Doc. Yeah, there's other link here. Here we already set up metrics for for oh, okay. for the work queue. You should see them to yeah. depth, how many ads, the queue latency, work duration. Work duration should actually be the one from the controller already. Which okay. Tries. And yeah, I have to confess, okay. I had a vague idea that I implemented stuff like this, but I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore where I did that. <laughs> okay, so this okay, great. So I what I can do then I'll I'll, I'll let me wire these up 
and then I'll come back. Yeah, to already like wired baseline. up. You just see them on Prometheus. Oh, I mean, I mean, like, I'll, what I'll do? Yeah. yeah, they're there. What I'll do? I want to yeah. put this into Grafana on like on like our end, and I want to get. I'll come back with some baselines for this. Great, great. Um, like with our scale, and we can get some ideas. Um, as, like, because eventually, like, with like a with all of these, like, we want it. Like, like you were asking earlier about this. Like, we want it to be something that we we don't want code to ever change this in the future. We want this to always. We want the integrity to be intact. And, and so like we want to have baselines for all every single one of these so um eventually that's what we'll get to so okay. uh, just you mentioned about the grafana uh, i think there was some discussion you know some time ago to actually we have some grafana dashboard and it would be nice because you know like all these metrics we forget them and if we can maintain some grafana dashboard it will be easy just to check and see the metrics there, you know. Wasn't that, I thought that there was, was a public part of the story. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I thought there was like a public, wasn't it, wasn't there, uh, wasn't there a talk about um, like creating one, like a public one that would be measure some, I don't know, periodic job or something. Yes. Um, I think that's what you mean, much right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, since we talk about that, I can give you an update from F Federico, who was preparing that in the background. So uh, from his pers from the infra perspective, he has everything ready for that, or almost. So if we would create now periodic jobs with what you enabled in Kubernetes CI, Marcello, that we can deploy the Prometheus. When, so when we would create the periodic job and label the pod accordingly, the metrics would already be collected and show up in the Grafana dashboard. Uh, what we do not have yet is um, access to Prometheus directly so that the developers can play around with the values themselves. There We have the bloat balance already, but the kubert.io domain is now owned by CNCF. And since they own our domain, it's a little bit tougher to get a DNS entry <laughs> than before. So we can't actually, so you can't actually reach it because there's no DNS associated. You can do a host entry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I could give you the, the, uh, a curl call with the host header and you would get there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the Grafana, we, there's a Grafana that is linked up to that already or? Uh, yeah, but just. Um, right, because then you but, can just uh, uh, explore tab in Grafana. Yeah, so the, the thing is, I mean, it's really, it's just for not, for external people, I would keep it want to keep it read only. Mm. Is, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, here, here is the dashboard uh, in general. So the idea would have been that we at least temporarily expose the Prometheus metrics directly so that we all can play around with dashboards and the collected data and so on, and that we then add permanent dashboards to the Scrafana. Mm -hmm. I mean, one one way we could maintain this yeah. is having a, a repo with the, the dashboards that people can make pull requests to. Yeah, uh, that's there. You can. So oh, okay, if, that's there. So the, all these dashboards you see there, they are. I can show you the URL too. Uh, just one second, looking it up. I just forgot where in project in for the they are. Uh, yeah, here here is an example PR where you can find out where, where uh, in which directory they are hosted. Mm -hmm. awesome. File changes. You basically just have your Prometheus instance. You create your dashboard and you click on export, and we can and you get a JSON, and this can be then committed here. Yeah. I nice. would have to look at the price changes. Okay. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> okay. So that's something we can leverage. Okay. Um, all right. We have two more. Um, two more to go. So VMI pod metrics. This is CPU, mem usage, open door routines, 
juicy times. Um, um, okay, what's a good way we can measure this? Can we, I think there's some, um, what's it called? Um, uh, I just lost it. There's a project that Kubernetes uses to leverage this. Um, should, yeah, should we have can, those already? Do we have this? Does anyone know? That's probably the question. I guess you're first. talking about, how's it called? Uh, Go the Go metrics exposed by Prometheus, or do you mean? Uh, uh, yeah, what it's called? C, C advisor, C advisor. Yeah, yeah. C advisor. Yeah, this is what it's called. Uh, I think Pro Q when we install the yeah? Prometheus operator, we already have these metrics. Yeah, I'm not sure, sure if C advisor would not give us more metrics, but at least the kubelet gives us a baseline. Right, right. Uh, but. Isn't C advisor just for the node? And those metrics come from if you use the Prometheus library, if you export Prometheus metrics in, in Vert Launcher, for example, or do you just want to like go open go routines you won't get from C advisor, I think? I think many, either. many of the metrics that C advisor exports, it's when we install Prometheus operator, we can see that. Yeah. C advisor, you know, reads like the C groups and directly. Um, and I'm not sure if it will give more things because, no. like, uh, the, the, the thing that Kubelet is not showing is the, the node metrics. Uh, however, the Prometheus operator installs the node exporter for that. So, so we yeah. have the node exporter too, but uh, Brett, you, you added the node exporter. Um, but um, I think what if we really want to get the Go runtime metrics from Vert launch reports, and this seems what you want, Ryan, right? Yeah. Then this is a little bit tricky because Vert Launcher has no network access because we give it to the VM, right? Um, so we would probably have oh. to talk about uh, collecting with Vert handler the metrics and exposing them together with the others like we do with VM metrics. Mm. Wait, can you explain? So, can you say that again? Like, why, why, why is it difficult with the launcher? So, I mean, it's easy for Vert Launcher to just expose Prometheus metrics, but it's not easy to scrape them because the pods have no the the the, the, the application in the pod doesn't really have network access anymore after we start the VM. Right. Okay. Because the VM has then the network access and not the pod anymore. I see. So we got to do something that's on the node, like the handler you mentioned, and we just but we need to associate the the data with the pod itself. It shouldn't be that... too hard, honestly, because no, we already yeah. have the flow for the VM metrics, which works exactly that way. Kevin, yeah, yeah, no, I, I want to say it, it should it shouldn't be complicated. Like we only need to, I I suppose VM metrics already do that. We just have to merge the metrics we get from the launches. Yeah. It, yeah, but, that would be the easy ideal case, but Virt Launcher doesn't expose the most Prometheus metrics. We just oh. an RPC call and then translate it in Prometheus metrics. So it may be a little bit more yeah, wiring, but better. at least the pattern is there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be would be ideal. Okay, that's that makes sense to me. Okay, sounds like. Right, that, I understand that. Sounds like. And I and I think those go metrics are actually more useful than what we get from C advisor, especially because we still want to, like we have this um, story going on that we want to make sure our VM overhead is um, small and correct. And I think those metrics help us see more how good yeah. launcher does stuff. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that makes sense to me. Okay, um, what's the next one? Uh, latency for virtual machine instances and virtual machines. Um, so this is API calls made to us. So it'd be Could like, what that means? Um, so like we are doing a get um, or a list of virtual machine instances. How long does that take? So this is just an idea of like our the vert API's performance when okay. it is handling any sort of verb. So, but uh, do you want to measure that from the in-cluster components or from a user component, user perspective? Um, I think, 
I think I I don't know. I'm not sure if we can we even measure it from the clients per side. I like I I think the only way we'd be able to do it was would be from the in cluster components. These there, of data. There, I th there you may get away with the round tripper. Um, I thought we talked about this, and like a the API still already measures that for us. Uh, I think. Um, the only problem I mentioned was that if you want to see latency for get requests, you also get VNC and console requests, which are long and they destroy your latency. That's why I also thought about moving them to like, connect instead of get, but that's breaking. So in general, the API so should give us those metrics already. And connect is tricky when we, when we talk about uh, well, what do you mean? Like the API server already gets us them. Like we, um, uh, like the. Um... We have it in the audit logs, but I don't know if they expose otherwise. It may be uh, exposed in the Prometheus metrics already from the yeah. API server. Yeah. The API Kubernetes API server exports metrics for the requested forwards, and as it's proxying those requests to our weird API, it should be in there. Kevin, I didn't look at them for some time. Does it record the API group or something, or what is it recording? It records path, I think. Or okay, I can just tell you that in C and console and so on, they're in a different, different API group that's called subresources to Yeah, they're on I'm subresources. Not sure if right. they are, maybe they are excluded by default anyway from the others. Yeah, I haven't looked at them the for a few months. Yeah. I, but I have a cluster here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then um, okay, if you have a link, Kevin, uh, you can yeah. go ahead, that'd be great. Um, yeah, just to at least see like uh, what's there or if there's, if it, if there is something there, we just, if it's not hooked up, we can hook it up or if it is hooked up, um, I, maybe we just need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, um, that covers that covers everything. I actually wanted to add one more thing. So the um, I was actually doing. Um, I haven't used like um, I, like just so that everyone is on the same page. Like when when everyone's doing development, like with make cluster up and make cluster sync, right? And you're doing enable Prometheus and all that stuff to do the testing to like with for stuff like this. Um, how how do people do like how are you like testing your um, with the dashboard? Like if you're doing it that way doing developing with make cluster up and make, make cluster sync. Do you have to like port forward and all sorts of stuff to make it work so you can watch the dashboard or watch Prometheus? I'm just wondering so, how people are doing development. So I guess with make up, cluster up, make cluster sync, uh, Marcello included a Grafana dashboard there, which you can yeah. enable by default. I yeah. wonder if it's the best thing because when you do make, uh, for permanent usage, because when you do make cluster down, whatever you had there is gone too, right? Um, but... Well, let's just say, like, if I wanted to, so, like, let's say I wanted to say I was looking at developing this, right? Um, I, and I, I and I'm using make cluster up, make cluster sync. I have enabled the dashboard, right? It sounds like everything's there. Like, I, I have everything there. Um, what, like, is it? Is this what people are doing? Is this the right way to do this? Like, and then maybe I just need to do some port forwarding to, like, because it's what, like, how does is make cluster sync and make cluster up? Is this using kind or something? It's no, it's starting real VMs. So, it, uh, um, so we start when you do when you start a two cluster node with Kubernetes CI, you get two mm -hmm. or you get multiple containers, but two VMs containing each a VM, a real VM, and they are forming a, a cluster with Kube ADM. And they use nested virtualization to actually then run VMs in there. Okay. So, and, yeah. what was the question? Is like how to access the dashboard? Is that or I yeah? Like so, if I'm if I want to do development, like and I have the Prometheus dashboard with make cluster up, like how can I view the dashboard? I have oh. nested vert. You mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. I see the node port. Like, how would I do it? Yeah. Uh, just a minute. Uh, of course. So you 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 need to do this SSH tunnel. To the VM. So actually, the demo. You don't know. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to do that anymore. It's not forwarded by default. Wait, just. Um, mm -hmm. 
um, just for your information, I, I added a, a metric that I just checked that it is at least on my OpenShift cost. I, I, but I think it's a Kubernetes metric, so it should work for everybody. OK. okay so Can you give right. me like? Uh... I also see this REST uh, I just sent here in the chat, you know, REST client request duration out. And it shows the path of the URL of the API. Uh, okay. Can you post this? Yeah, post it in the back. This client request duration. Yeah, and I was using this one, so, but I, I, I don't know if they show different things. Anyway, we can, okay. we can just, yeah, Marcel, yeah. the one you posted is like our client metric, what calls we make, I think, what we make ourselves, that's what we export. And the one I shared is what the API server records on requests it gets and forwards. Oh, nice. I think we, we want both, yeah? so. Yeah, well, well, I think so too. Okay, all right, let's give this a try. Okay, Roman, you also posted in chat. So, like, oh, well, you with the way so, you do so this. So. After, you, after you did make cluster up, make cluster sync, you can yeah. call this cluster up CLI ports Grafana or Prometheus command, and it will give you the, the forwarded port to your local host of your machine. Okay, I'm going to wait this up here too. It's helpful. Okay, so oh, like that's cool. Make, and it should be script table, so you can use it in scripts. And uh, we, it, there is also a way to use a fixed port. But the disadvantage with the fixed port is that you easily end up with collisions, right? And uh, the, the number, I think, is the output, by the way. Yeah, the, right. the, the right. number is the output. Oh, which you yeah. so, <laughs> that, that, so, so you can basically do something like, just to illustrate it, you can do, for instance, in a, you could create a small script. Open your and you yeah. get the port when you just like edit it to the chat now. When you call it like this, you get the port directly. It would then be something yeah. like HTTPS, localhost. So here's what I'm doing Prometheus. There, true. So this is what, um, I'll, so I'm going to do this uh, and then I'll try that. Okay. So that, that way, um, Oh, and then you posted something else. Yeah, if I remember correct, I think you also need to make Grafana through also if you want to have Grafana. Yeah, I, I saw Grafana. We actually ended up getting deployed with this. It was there. Really? Yeah. I had I a see different Grafana. impression when I reviewed the code. So <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I see if it's going through, uh <laughs> maybe we should Hold check. On. Hold it on. shouldn't deploy because... Grafana. Uh if he's not exposed, um... well, hold on. Let me tell you, um, because I maybe it was this. Oh. It wasn't deploying my test, but oh, okay. Maybe. It it's it's actually it's not deploying Grafana. It's deploying a Grafana service. Just that's why I thought it was. Oh, it's because it has now the an additional service that uh, we created. Okay, so it is not. So it's not there. Okay, so yeah. I need another flag. Okay, uh -huh. enable yeah. Grafana thing. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, great. Okay, so I'll do this here because this this was this is helpful. Uh, I want to give this a try and see do some testing. Okay, we're we're about one minute over. Does anyone else have anything you want to add? Okay, all right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next Thursday. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.